Hello everybody and welcome to Extra Mulligan. Today we're going to be opening one of these lovely, lovely commander decks. I'm thinking um, Dungeons of Death. I had my eye on this for a while now. The Magic the Gathering commander decks. Uh, I think this is a pre-con, uh, like a pre-constructed deck. So really excited to see uh, what's inside this. Uh, I have not spoiled myself because uh, I want to get the reaction brand spanking fresh. Uh, a big thank you to Tabletop District from Bandar Sunway Selangor. They were super helpful when I pre-ordered this. And uh, without further ado, let's just, just, let's just, just, the words. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. There we go. Words, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm slurring my words today. Anyway, let's get it up and open. Uh. Alright, so at the start we have the box which I clumsily um, dropped uh, the contents of on my table. Don't worry, they're all safe. So this is the box, this is the front of the box. Uh, I like how it comes off quite easily with the, uh, the, the strip. It's very easy to open now, rather than the older ones. So we have here... Uh, Descent into the dungeon. Choose your commander and overcome both friend and foe in this def definitive multiplayer magic format. Venture forth with Sephiris into the deepest dungeon in the Forgotten Realms. Emerge with a powerful army of undead and drag your opponents to their doom. Really, really love the, the design of the box, like dragon scales. Really fitting for the dungeons and a, a dragons here. Uh, besides that, we have a... Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't think... This isn't the commander. I don't think I can open this. Because... I think it's just like... Yeah, it's it's not a card. I think the card is inside the decks. And I believe there's a... Counters or something. I don't think I can pop... I actually can pop them out. There we go. I don't know what these are for, but I think I'm just gonna leave them be. This is quite nice though. I'm just gonna put this in the background for now. Let's uh, uh put them in the background right here. Looks pretty nice. There we go. So what else does it come up with is this uh this uh this back box. It's uh well, not even much to say. It has the the the, the like the nice dragon scale design. Uh, it has the blueish, whitish, purplish. I don't know. It looks it looks cool. Well, we have the um, the symbol for this one. Actually, this is kind of distracting. I'm gonna pick this away. All right, let's get into it. Extra cardboard. I'm gonna keep the cards in place. All right, so I'm gonna leave this right here. Right here we have the uh, the counter. Actually, there's not really a counter. This is a um, what you call uh, a life. I, I guess you could call it a life counter. I'm not sure what you are supposed to actually call these. Like you would think that uh, me playing Magic for uh, the years that I have, I would know what this is. These are called, but I don't really do. I think. They should have used the spin down counters like they did with the previous decks. Uh, this would the spin down counter would be more suitable because you know DND D20. Uh, the spin down counter for like the bundles and stuff are really nice. This is what they look like though, right here. Aside from that, we have uh, a guide on how to play it. We're not gonna go through all of it, just like briefly. Sephiris of the Hidden Ways. So this is Sephiris, huh? It's uh, it's based on the new mechanic, the dungeon mechanic, where we'll get into when we we open the more of the, the deck. Oh boy, I'm just gonna leave it there. And what else does it come up with? 
here we go. Actually, there's nothing else. There's the deck, huh? Look at that. It's a tick boy. Very tick, tick, tick. Now let's just get into it by unwrapping this little treat. Oh my god, there's so much rares at this time. There are so many, there are more rares than the, the previous decks that I bought. The, the last um, commander deck that I bought that was a product from Wizards of the Coast, uh, sold in a set, was um, the one in the Zendikar block, the uh, Rising of Zendikar. And uh, I can say my Obun is a really, really strong commander in um, my pod. So we have, uh, let's, let's take it, bring it a little closer. We have here is a Minimus Containment. Uh, it takes a while for the, for it to actually, come on, there we go. Minimus Containment. We have Hana Pasha Ruin Seeker. Dungeon map. Evolving Wilds, really good card. I really like the plan. Uh, Buttonard, Everfall Purse, Play Golem, Compound Pouch, Random Unicorn. I don't know if the the common ones have like value, the commons and uncommon ones, but if they do, I'll put up uh, the pricing there. I'll put up the one that's like worth more than a dollar. But if it's like less than a dollar, uh, I won't bother to put it on. I have this one. This is like one of my favorite cards to play, actually. Unmarial Rights, Victimize, Cloud Laser, Spark, uh, Necrotic Sliver. That's actually interesting. I've never seen like a commander deck place putting uh, a sliver inside. This is actually a first for me. I don't know if anywhere else has it. But this is actually pretty cool. Uh, Obsessive Stitcher, Vanish into the Memory, Arcane Signet, Burnish Heart, Commander, Spear, Felwar Stone, Meteor Golem, Soul Ring. Oh boy, oh boy, I love me some Soul Ring. I actually want to get like a tad of a Soul Ring. That would be really cool to have though. Wayfarer's Bauble, Arcane Sang. Now we go into the lands though. Uh, let's, let's browse that. Let's brace through it. Arcane Sanctum, Azorius Chancy Chancery, Command Tower, Demir Adequate. I'm a proud Demir boy with this Demir deck. Actually, I really prefer the Golgari, but uh, you know, I, I, I dwell with the Demir. You know, I chill with them. The Orzov Basilica, Terramorphic Expanse, Thriving Heat, Thriving Isle, Thriving More, Lightning Greaves. Hell yeah. I've been looking for a Lightning Greaves for like a very long time and it's hard, like I prefer to trade than to order stuff online but since I, I already have it in this pre-con, um, the search is over. Planes, 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 planes. I do like the, the text that all the uh, basic plans are given. Like, venturing, venturing beneath the desert Sands, you've discovered an alien power pulsing within the inconceivable energy. I feel like that that just an alien power, come on. You know, you know that's gonna be a mind player. An island. After carefully after careful study, you've determined that the giant ruins serve to track the movements of the planes. The pl oh, planets, sorry. And they will soon align once more. A swamp. As a plague ravages the world above, you've made your way to the Underdark in search of fungal pansea. And uh, we have a turn card. We have a turn card and the rest are just tokens. So we have uh, illusion token, illusion token, illusion token. A clue. And uh, a dungeon. We have, I'm surprised we only have two instead of the three, but I guess uh, these two is the the better ones for this deck. So if, uh, behind these tokens, you have actually another copy of a different token. Just turn it around. So we have a 
here we have a oop, treasure, treasure, goblin, zombie, zombie, skeleton, skeleton, champion of wits. That looks cool. Uh, that champion of wits is that a uh, is what, what was that called? Uh, is that our, is that an hour of devastation card? I'm assuming it is. If it's not, uh, I'll play it up on screen what block it was. Now we're going into the the good parts, the the rares, the mid stuff. What is this? This is a thick card. Wait, it's not a card. What is this? Is this a piece of cardboard that's like really thick? But it looks like a card though. Because you have the actual card here. You have the Sephiris right here. And you have this. But this is the real card because it's not as thick. Uh, I don't know what this is though. I'm going to have to do my research. In the next video, I'll be better equipped to explain it because I'll have to do my research. I'm going into this pretty much blind. So, Sephiris of the Hidden Ways. What the, what does she do? They, uh, whenever one or more creature cards uh, put into the graveyard from anywhere, venture into the dungeon. This ability triggers only once each turn. Create an undead. When create undead. Whenever you complete a dungeon, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's really nice. That's really nice. I, I bet it'll be really easy to venture for. We're gonna put the not card up here. Just uh, so you don't forget what we're unboxing. Ah. We have uh, Nihil Lore, a legendary horror creature. It's a, it's a mind player. I love the mind player uh, enemies. They're really interesting. Uh, I would love to make a playable mind player character. When Nihi Lore, I'm butchering the name, I'm sure of it, enters the battlefield for each opponent, tap up to one untapped creature you control. When you do gain control of the target creature, that player controls with power less than or equal to the tapped creature's power. As long as you control Nihi Lore, whenever you attack with a creature an opponent owns, you gain two life, and that player. Uh, that player loses two lives, so this is a pretty good guard. Um, this this is actually a pretty really sick card. Yeah, the price is up screen right now. Uh, this might have some value in it. I don't really know until I actually put it on screen. Immovable rod, which is another rare. What it does is uh, you choose not to untap immovable rod during your untap step whenever immovable rod becomes untapped venture into the dungeon for as long as an immovable rod remains untapped another target permanent loses all its abilities okay that's cool that's cool we have a halfling as the art card very nice a radiant solar radiant solar here what it does it has flying lifelink cost of five and uh, white mana whenever radiant solar or another non, non bleh, sorry uh, or another non creature token non token creature enters the battlefield under your control venture to the dungeon uh, you may dis you discard a card by paying white and you can venture the dungeon just like that and you gain three life at it. and uh, while you do it that's really good that's really good the price is up there the next one we have Revivify. We Revivify, roll a d20. It's an instant card for 3 mana, which is a 1 white and a 2 2. With 2 mana. Roll a d20 and add the numbers of the creature cards in your graveyard that were put there in the battle to, from the battlefield this turn. Return all creature cards uh, in your graveyard that were put from the battlefield this turn to your hand or return those creatures. From the graveyard to the battlefield, if you roll a 15 or more, and the the latter one is a 1 to 14, if you roll that amount. A Toral Investigation. It's an enchantment that basically, whenever you attack, investigate. You basically, investigate gives you the token, it lets you draw a card. If you sacrifice that 
artifact, which is that token. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, venture into the dungeon. So it's a easy venture right there. We have here an arcane endeavor. Arcane endeavor right here. Uh, it's a sorcery. Roll two d8s and choose one result. Draw cards equal to the result. Then you may cast an instant or sorcery. Mana value less or equal to the result from your hand without paying its cost. This is sick, man. This is so good. This is five. This is seven. It costs a seven, but you might be able to cheat it somehow. I don't know. There's probably a way to cheat it, man. Like big high cost like this. This is really nice though. Draws that many cards. Oof. So good, so good. We have a uh, Min Willy Illusionist. Uh, whenever you draw your second card for each turn, create a 1-1 one, one blue illusion creature token and this creature against 1 plus 0 for each other illusion you control. Whenever an illusion you control dies, you may put a permanent card with mana value less or equal to that creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield. I like the art for this one. It has like that um, that very whimsy uh, young adventure uh, feeling to it. Like, oh, they're, they're exploring, they're venturing for it, you know? And I like, like venturing for the dungeon. Huh? Huh? Bad joke, I know. Um, this is nice. It's a gnome wizard that costs just three mana, two blues. Next one, we have a uh, phantom steed. Flash costs uh, four, which is one blue. Whenever phantom steed enters the battlefield, exile another target creature you control until phantom steed leaves the battlefield. Whenever phantom steed attacks, create a. a a tap and attacking token that's a copy of the exile creatures except it's an illusion in addition to the other types sacrifice that token in end of combat that's pretty nice i like that he has flash rod of absorption um i don't know if this is a new card specifically for this deck or it's in the uh the set but uh what it does is it costs three mana which is one blue it's an artifact. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery, exile it instead of putting it into the graveyard as it resolves. If you may pay X and tap, uh, sacrifice Rod of Absorption, and you may cast any number of spells from among the exile with total mana value X or less without paying its mana cost. That's really good. I love this. This is where you can cheat out the, the cost. I guess. I mean, if you, I guess you can combo it with the uh, the arcane endeavor from the previous uh, what I previously showed just now. We have grave endeavor, which is another endeavor. Uh, roll two d tens. Uh, choose one as a result. Return. A creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield with the number 1-1 one, one counters equal to the result, then each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life where X is the other result. That's pretty good, pretty good. One of Orcus, it's a legendary artifact. Uh, what it does, it's... Whenever a equipped creature attacks or blocks, it Zombies you control gain death touch until the end of turn. Okay, that's pretty good. This is a uh, deck solely built on having your zombies there. Create that many 2 2 black zombie creature tokens if your equipped creature deals combat damage to a player. That's really nice. The equip is just 3 and it actually just costs 3 to put it on the field. It's 1 black and 2 mana. Extract brain. Yeah, I get some brain. It reminds me of that, uh, uh, the thing that comes to mind was that the, the brain alien from uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Uh, sorcery, target opponent ch chooses X cards from their hand. Look at those cards, you may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Midnight Pathlighter, creatures you control. 
can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. That's pretty neat. Whenever one or more creatures you control, it deals combat damage. That player, okay, to that player, venture the dungeon. Uh, four mana, uh, cost two and one white and one blue. Cataclysmic Gearhawk. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is from. Uh, this is from uh, Kaladesh. I'm I'm thinking this is from Kaladesh. It's a gear help, and it's from Kaladesh. I'm assuming this is probably a reprint. Uh, vil vigilance when Cataclysmic Gear Halt enters the battlefield. Each player chooses an artifact, creature, an enchantment, and a plane smoker from among the non-land permanents they control. Then they sacrifice the rest. This is a nice little board wipe because it's a big, big creature. Uh, Eternal Dragon. We have a first a dragon in this deck. I think this is the first dragon. I might have just skimmed through and there was a dragon that I did not pay attention to. But uh, what this dragon does is return Eternal Dragon from a graveyard to your hand. Activate it during your upkeep. Uh, that's if you pay three and uh, three mana and two whites, uh, which is quite interesting because you're you're have you're having a second skill, which is plane cycling. Get that mana up there. Uh, so basically, if you have enough mana, you can just like um, cycle every turn, which is nice. Which is nice. I like that. If you have enough mana, that is. Karmic guide. Karmic guide. Let's see. Uh, protection from black. Echo. Uh, whenever Karmic Guide enters the battlefield, target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Sun a Titan. We all know what Sun Titan does, and I think it has a really good price on it. Whenever a Sun Titan enters or attacks, you may um, target permanent with mana value of three or less from your graveyard and put it into the battlefield. Easy peasy, sunblast. Uh, very simple skill. When it enters the battlefield, destroy all tap creatures. Champion of Wits. Uh, I don't know if I've seen this one before. Uh, I think this is a token that we just saw just now. So, what it does. Oh, I gotta take a while to focus. Sorry about that. Champion of Wits. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. If you do, uh, discard two cards. So that's pretty good. Eternalize, it's a 5. Okay, so a 5 2, and then you make a copy, which is the copy I, uh, I previously showed. Curator of Mysteries, it's in the Sphinx. It's a nice little Sphinx here. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you scry one. Oh, Phantasmal Image. What a Phantasmal. Image, right? Yeah, we have a fantastic little image. Uh, you have, if you have a fan, if you have phantasmal image enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature in the battlefield, except it's an illusion in addition to its other types. And it has whenever when this creature becomes target of a spell, sacrifices it. Sacrifice it. Okay, that's pretty nice. I like this one. I think that's worth you know, some good money. Doomed Necromancer, uh, sacrifice Doomed Necromancer, return target creature from graveyard to the battlefield. That's I like that a lot. Necromatic Selection, I love this card. I use this almost religiously. I I, I make it a point to tutor this in my uh, my Demir decks. It's a, such a good card in my Rogue Demir decks. I love this card so much. Uh, Ashen Rider, when. That's good. Uh, for the next one, we have Baleful Strix. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, hostage Taker. Oh, this is also a really good card. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, another target creature or art of, uh, exile another target creature or artifact until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield. You may cast that card as long as it remains exiled. And you will spend mana as though it were mana of any type of cast as well. This is a lovely, lovely card. Utter End. I have this card. It's one of the... I think it's one of... This is one of the first kind of, um, like, rares that I pulled ever. Because, uh... I don't know. I, it was uh, one of the cons boxes. Like, around that, that time. We have Solemn Simulacrum. This... 
this this may come as a shock but this this is my first solemn simulacrum right now this box has given me my first solemn simulacrum so that is amazing uh what it does is when it enters the battlefield let's search for a basic land and then you put it into the battlefield tap and then you can you may sacrifice it so you can draw a card which is really good i like that uh choke and Stuary. It's a uh, it's land. There's nothing much you can say about it. You just reveal a swamp or an island, and then it doesn't enter the battlefield tap. Uh, dark water catacombs. We have exotic orchard. Uh, Advent of any color the land an opponent could produce. That's good. That's good. Grayer Rand Santi Sanitarium. Uh, that's from Avacyn, I think. I don't know, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it has that whole, like, gothic aesthetic and, uh, you know, that's, that, that, and that's where the story takes place. High Market, this actually has, um, really good money, I think. This is, uh, price that will always be up on screen, but what it does is it gives you one, like, generic mana. And if you sacrifice a creature, you gain one life. Nimbus Maze. Um, activate only if you control land. Activate only if you control a planes. It's good to have dual lands that basically doesn't come in tap. I like that. Uh, it's same as the previous one. It doesn't enter. It enters the battlefield tap unless you reveal a planes or island from your hand. Uh, Prairie Stream, uh, enters the battlefield tap unless you control two or more basic lands. And finally, we have Sunken Hollow. Uh, enters the battlefield tap unless you control two or more basic lands. So that is pretty much it. I'm really happy that I was able to pick up all four of these uh, commander decks and I will be very happy to like showcase them in the future videos. So look out for that but before we go we're gonna open up we're gonna crack about one draft booster let's see what we get though let's just get into opening it right now all right so we have goblin javelinier your ambush on the road soul knife spy improvised weaponry Horde Robber, Compel Duel, Health, Half Elf Monk, love them Half Elf Monks, Jaded Cell Sword, Baleful Beholder, that's a very nice Beholder right there, uh, Dejin Windseer, Ray of Frost, Keen Eared Sentry, Bag of Holding, Oh, we have an instrument of the bards. Love them bards. Look at that. It's a harp. It's a big ass harp. Put that focus right there. Yeah, that's probably some worth something. And we have uh, lands and uh, lost mines of Pendelver and a skeleton token to match. Well, that's it. Thank you for coming to this video, I guess. Anyways, thank you for clicking on the video. Remember to like. Uh, like, share, and uh, tell your friends. Subscribe too. I am gonna go enjoy the rest of my sleeving because these decks deserve to be sleeve. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!